All right, guys, what you're seeing here, I'm going to give you a few brief cut in and outs. We're going to go to what it's for, solar and wind. The video is not short, but it's very descriptive, and you're going to get to see inside this thing, and you'll see links at the bottom underneath the ads from whatever video promoter we're on and look underneath that where it's got description you'll get where this came from what it's got in it more details from that link and then below it look all the way down more of them for other things that i'm mentioning in here that might help you make some decisions this is a 60 amp mppt let's go now and see what we're working with all right now this is a solar charge controller and mppt you can also use this for wind power this is total overkill if you have or own a Missouri wind and slobber wind turbine, a, a feed them or whatever they call them, the Vietnamese made stuff. Now, however, if you have a Thermodyne or a Hurricane Wind Power or an Ulu or a, a Lico or if you have a Sunning or something like that, these are perfect for them. Uh, you'll be able to run that wind turbine through this. Just make sure that you're using your a battery sensor with a dump load. And I would say buy a professional dump load. Don't buy that garbage, 440 amp lie fraud garbage. Get you a professional dump load uh, with SSRs and things like that. Uh, windandsunpower.com professional dump load gear okay hurricane wind power sells some and for the lower grade but still functional you can get them from uh thermodyne um off of uh, ebay so uh look at the very 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 bottom of the page under all the description stuff and i'll put a bunch of those little links and help you get to them and then you can read their info on them and make your choices but works good up to about a 1500 watt truthfully rated wind turbine so the missouri wind and slobber turbine not truthfully rated the uh, thermodyne turbines a little boasted but mostly very close to truthfully rated the hurricane wind turbines very very accurately rated as well as the sunning wind and ulu and i'd say about a 70 percent close to truthful rating on the alicos this is a pointless item to use on anything under 500 watts but if you want to use mppt on a wind turbine this thing is the jewel to use and it's better than an Outback, better than a Midnight Classic, and less than half the price. So pay attention, and let's go to the next step on this, and I'll give you some more description. Now, as I do in my videos, I will open this up so that we can view the components. Inside of here, you're going to determine, should I spend 250 or so dollars on something like this, if it's junk or full of a bunch of hand soldering and other things well they can put them in pretty cases and have them all hand soldered up this one does have very good construction now it's not a fan inside of here so there's no fans which means no fans to fail and one of the things that this unit has is extremely heavy heat sink and it has a plate that keeps it roughly about five eighths of an inch off of your mounting surface big difference it comes with multiple sensor locations inside of here, uh, your PV coming in, your photovec or solar panels coming in, and then your batteries going out. But what's unique about this unit is it doesn't test its voltage from here. It tests its voltage from a battery source. Now, the logic behind that is that where this is having solar coming in, processing it, and putting it back out, is that this unit is designed of course the voltage will be higher because it's pushing it to the batteries to charge a battery you must push the voltage amperage into the battery and that'll read higher however with this one having this with about looks like about a 15 foot cable with it you can reach down and hook it to your batteries down at your batteries and it senses from the batteries back which gives you a much better bulk float and absorb rate of charge. So it comes with a MPP tracker software, runs on Windows. You can go to their site and download it for Linux. So this unit here has easy, easy to operate features out here that just basically using the menu, it gives you an idea of what's going on. But to program, you're going to use the cable that's provided with it. And it programs from like a laptop there's 
uh, easy programming for this and for some people with very advanced phones you can see and find on the internet there are adapters that will actually go to this and go to your mini USB to your phone say like a uh, Samsung 7 or or whatever you know one of these phones um, now we're gonna open this up here shortly and if you want one of these after seeing that look down here below where they put junk ads and stuff look below that towards like description of the video and you'll see a link and I'll put you a link in there and you can go in there directly to it you can read all the details a lot more details make your decision there now this one here comes with a pretty good manual on it that is not in Chinglish it's actually in real English okay now it's good for 12 24 volt and 48 volt this unit here will handle 800 watts coming in and it'll handle the full 60 amps coming in uh, for 12 volt for 24 volt it will handle every ounce of 1650 watts and for for the uh, 48 volt it'll handle 3000 watts so it's 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 actually known for that my suggestion never go over 85 percent of a rating on any charge controller because your weather conditions humidity heat could cause them to fail now let's take a look on the inside of this and I'll explain what this little door is and how all this sets up in here so let's get opened up it's not too hard all right now with this cover off just this front cover before we take the rest off you will see down here this is the voltage sensor it has a battery temperature sensor now these units do not come with a battery temperature sensor however if you look up uh, tracer battery temperature sensor it's actually the same identical one that you could order for this one for $21 you can get it from them for six so I'll put that link on there too so look down at the bottom there will be the this unit there'll be a link to this unit and then there, right below that will be a link to that battery temperature sensor that you can get for these so this is what that voltage sensor goes to is right there and drops down to your batteries so that it senses direct from the battery and not from pushed voltage that would be higher on this end of the cable and go into your batteries. So now let's finish getting the rest of this open. All right, now to open this case up, you have two screws here. That is part of your communications adapters. And one screw here, you have the two that come off on your cover plate for your wiring, which is very nice, very nice grommets. You have those two and then you have two on the bottom here and on the other side you have two and if you want to see more details I'll turn that up right quick give you some more details of what this unit is so you have an idea of what its capacities are now the original company for this is eSun Power but you will see they are sold by Maximum Solar on, on uh, eBay which is that link I put at the bottom uh, Maximum Solar puts MPP up here however they are a uh, the company is Esun Power. It's a Taiwanese company, and these are manufactured partially Taiwan, partially China. So, but the grade quality is very high. So let's go ahead and we'll open it up. And I have a ground wire right here. So we want to take that ground wire loose. That grounds your case to your heat sink. And I want you to pay attention very carefully here. Uh, anybody who gets one of these or, or any solar controller or any inverter anything that's not part of a uh, utility system such as your local utility service you need to put in a second ground rod in the ground to connect things like this too do not hook your inverter your wind control charger your uh, solar control chargers anything that you have do not hook it to the ground rod that's being used for your house. Uh, the smartest thing you can do is take some number four um, copper, dig a hole in the ground, coil a little bit of it up and come up, and then make you a ground connection for that only. Now that is called discharge ground. You're not needing a ground where you take 220 volts and you split it in half, or two 120 sets. That ground is needed for that but that's not what you're doing with this. You're needing a ground for static discharge only or failure discharge only. So get you some four gauge, make you a hole, dig it in the ground about a foot and a half, two feet deep, unless you're drilled dry ground. If you already get down to where you get a little moisture, 
and coil that up in there, to four or five feet of it, and then come up and then make you a ground connector that you can hook all this alternative energy equipment to. Do not use residential ground for this. Now, up inside, you have a connector that goes to your panel in the front. It just comes loose and then you can lay it over and that's what that looks like on the inside for your control panel out here. Now this panel out here is not designed to operate this unit. So you do need the remote operating capabilities of your laptop and the software. You don't have to leave your laptop hooked up for this to operate. Once you program it to your parameters, it'll work fine. Now, up in the top, proving it is an MPPT, it has the big Toradal transformers and those who think these are inductors no they don't create a growing or a a, um, a distributed magnetic field they create an internal magnetic field like a transformer and inside of here you have capacity of 160 uh, volts in these capacitors and these are for your control your power coming in so this unit is capable, as, as it claims in here, of 145 volts. However, do not do what a lot of people screw up and do. They will take an attempt to put 145 volts into this. That's for sunlight surges, sun, sun spikes. Um, you only should put 80% of the rating. So if you have a tracer and that tracer says 100 volt, and you go, wow, I got solar panels, 100 volt, boom, it burns up. You're mad, of course. However, the reality is, is that that's for spikes. And if you read further, it'll tell you in all of them. So you would run that on say 80 volts, 85. Just don't go over that for a hundred volt. This one right here, you could run it about 120 and never have a problem. So in fact, I believe it does say it in here when I read this earlier, 120. That's what your control panel will show, of course, with your actual information in it. So you can see it right there when you walk up to it. If you want to get further detail, go to your software and your laptop. So internally, it appears to have good relays, very good boards. Looks like I don't see any hand soldering work at all. Here is your MOSFETs that do all your voltage. Has a very heavy heat sink going to this heat sink and there's another row over here. This unit uses very heavy gauge. So. That's not, this is not a weak unit, it's very strong. And it uses the, the wound copper, which is a very good way of having an extremely smooth transfer of current voltage into current back into this to do your charging. That's what Toronto transformers are good for. So if you look on the side of it, you'll see the heat sinks, how it has this large uh, bar of, and it looks like a very high grade of aluminum by the sheen on it. Uh, it's not polished, it's just you can tell the purity of aluminum by its sheen, duller the less. Um, and then the huge heat sinks. Now, got a few scuffs on it there. Um, then you can see, of course, how the standoffs are mounted on it. They're very solid, very well mounted. The screws for holding the cover plate on. So all the mounting on here is not something they would easily pull apart, strip out. You do have this up in the top that is made to stand off and have your hardware up here mounted on. Um, looks like all the connectors are fairly simple. This connector here, this is that, that uh, additional ca capabilities. Uh, goes through that port right there. Like I said, there's two screws and this plate comes off. So we'll go ahead and pull that off and you can see most people won't know what that's for. All right, and that's all the screws that come out of this unit to get to the point where we are. We have that little cover off and you can see down in here, I believe, and you will see that it's for a card that will fit down in there. And that is for different programming features, including linking a numerous one of these together if you want them to all communicate together. Now, this is an extremely advanced model of a MPPT. And I have learned out of installing two of these already that these can handle extremes, very high temperatures, uh, neglectful owners. In the case of one guy out in, in uh, Oakley, Idaho, very neglectful. It works. This works impressive. So this unit right here was bought by a guy that is um, an extra 
because apparently he thought he needed five and four doing more than enough for the job. So I now possess it and I will use it if I need it. Otherwise, it'll go on to another job site. And I do believe that I would recommend these. I've been installing some. They are extremely good. MPP Solar that sells these um, backs the product. So if you have a problem, they're pretty quick about it. And I would say that it's very much worth um, probably more than they're, they're charging for it. So just my review on it, pretty good unit. I'd say if, uh, if you're gonna go off grid or you're gonna use solar power, this is the top of the line and way cheaper than a Midnight Classic or Outback, way cheaper. And I personally think built better. It don't have no fans to fail. Nice unit.